Hello and welcome everyone to this video on optimizing SAP or data performance by Zarantech. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our Zarantech YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from us. Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the concept of optimizing OData performance. Now what is OData? So OData is nothing but a data protocol and it's a, a standard organized, standardized protocol for building and consuming restful application programming interfaces. To ensure efficient performance in OData services, several optimizing strat optimization strategies can be implemented. So we are going to see what are the various optimizing strategies that we can implement in our OData services to optimize our OData performance. And these strategies include the server-side implementation, query optimization, general best practices, and below are some of the detailed notes that we can use while optimizing our OData performance. The first one is server-side optimization. So in server-side, we can see use efficient data modeling. So in efficient data modeling, we have proper indexing that is to ensure that database tables using OData services have appropriate indexes. Indexes basically helps us to fetch our da data very fastly and indexes can significantly improve query performance. Then we can use nor the concept of normalization and denormalization and use the normalization to eliminate redundancy and improve data integrity. In some cases, denormalization can be used to reduce the number of joins required. Then we have data catching. So implement catching mechanism for frequently accessed data. Tools like Redis or in memory catching can be beneficial. Then we have efficient data retrieval. That is, we can use the various efficient data retrieval techniques. The first one we can, which we can use is selective data retrieval. And in this, we can fetch only the necessary columns rather than selecting all the columns by using select star. So instead of using select star, we can directly give the name of the fields that we want to display in our OData services. So this reduces the amount of data transferred over the network and it also helps in optimizing OData. Then we can use the concept of pagination, where we implement server-side paging to handle data sets efficiently. And we can use here keywords like dollar top, dollar skip, and dollar count query options to control our data size. Then the third one in server-side optimization is database optimization. In case of database optimization, we can use the concept of stored procedure. And we can use stored procedure for complex queries this they can be optimized and cached by the database engine. Then we have query execution plan, which we can use by regularly review and optimize the database query execution plan. Then the second one which we have is query optimization. Now see, what is this query optimization? In case of query optimization, we can use filter and query options. So for filter, we mainly use the dollar filters keyword and using this we up using this filter, it basically reduces the amount of data return and place the most select conditions first. So we need to use here place the most selective conditions first. Then we can use a keyword like dollar select and dollar expect expand. So using dollar select to retrieve only necessary properties, and we use dollar expand judicially to include related entities. But be aware of the potential performance impact. Then we have our batching request. So we can use the batch multiple requests. When we should we use it? So use batch requests to minimize the number of HTTP calls or data supports batching, which allows multiple operations to be sent in a single HTTP request. Then we have throttling and rate limiting. So in case of throttling and rate limiting, we can use control request rate, implementing throttling to limit the number of requests per user or per time period this helps in managing and preventing the abuse of our OData. Then we have a response comparison. See what have actually happens in response comparison. So here we have can use the concept of enable comparison using the zip or other comparison method to reduce the payload size of the responses and it ensures the client support comparison. 
Then the third one is our general best practices that we should use. The first one is error handling and logging. In case of error handling, we can implement robust and error handling by providing meaningful error messages and handle exceptions gracefully. And we can use appropriate HTTP status codes here. Then we have logging and monitoring. So in case of logging and monitoring, we can use implement logging for monitoring performance and troubleshooting issues. Tools like we can use tools like ELK Stake or Azure Monitor can be useful. Then we have security considerations. So in case of security condition, we can use authentication and authorization. And here we can use authorization. Then we can use JWT or other secure authentication mechanism to ensure proper authorization checks to restrict, restrict access to sensitive data. They can, then we can use the concept of input validation in our security consideration. And we can using this, we can validate all user inputs to prevent SQL injection and other security vulnerabilities. Then we have our API versioning. So in case of API versioning, we can manage a various API versions by implementing versioning to manage changes in the API without breaking existing clients. So here we can use URI versioning or query parameter versioning. Then at last we have the documentation and testing. So in case of documentation and testing, we can use comprehensive documentation. So what is the use of this comprehensive documentation? It mainly provide clear and comprehensive API documentation. So you can here we can use tools like Swagger, Open API, and can help in documenting APIs. And also we can use regular testing. It is very essential to use the regular testing so that we can check for the potential threats to our data services. So perform regular performance testing using tools like Postman or Zmeter, identifying and address performance bottlenecks. So now what is the conclusion for it? So optimizing OData performance involves a combination of server-side enhancement, query optimization, and adherence to best practices by efficiently managing data retrieval, implementing a robust catching mechanism, and ensuring proper indexing. The performance of OData services can be significantly improved. Additionally, regular monitoring, logging, and performance testing are crucial to maintaining and improving the efficiency of all data services over time. So this is how we can mainly optimize all data performance and so that it can lead to various other features by such that we can get our data in less period of time by in less period of time without affecting our database in a bad manner. Okay. So this is all about our optimizing OData performance in SAP. Thank you very much.